Enterprise, where I'm bringing on Googlers to talk about the tech strategies and best practices that are influencing enterprises today. My name is Stephanie Wong, developer advocate, and today I have Matt Leonard, billing and cost management product manager. We're going to be talking about how you can adjust to new billing concepts with the cloud and take advantage of some new cost optimizations. So Matt, thanks for being here. Thank you. So first off, I want to dive right into it because you know, a lot of people don't know that there's a full product suite with billing and cost management. Usually they think it's just budgets and, you know, paying your invoice at the end of the month. So can you tell me more about how you can help customers get insight into their environments? Sure, that's a great question. Google Cloud Cost Management supports a number of features that help customers manage their costs and spending in the, in the cloud. It's not just the invoice, to your point. It's tools around reporting so that you understand real-time costs, budgets so that you can monitor uh, and keep control of your environment, uh, and detailed billing exports so that you can enable those touchback scenarios and build your own dashboards in, in a different set of tooling outside of the cloud. So it sounds like that's pretty different from on-prem licensing, because with that, you have a known variable for a year, number of cores, seat spot. But with the cloud, it's not as predictable. You know, you have to think about queries ran, API requests, gigabytes of storage. So you know, how do you kind of explain this new concept to people? Yeah, I mean, cloud has really transformed the way that people think about infrastructure. Uh, gone is a traditional procurement process where you're essentially building out large data settings that have long life cycles. And you're moving to a world where anyone can spin up a workload, and that workload potentially uh, could have runaway costs, right? Like, this is the great fear of CIOs and CEOs, is that somebody's going to spin up a workload that's going to cost them $100,000, and, and you know they were expecting to spend $1,000 on that workload. So uh, what we've had to build in cost management is tooling that enables you to, to organize and monitor this environment. So so that you don't have runaway costs, uh, and that you really spend what you need to in order to manage your business. Yeah, for them, it's a huge change in thinking. But I know that they also see the benefit of the cloud technologies with services like serverless that let their developers focus on the code and not the infrastructure. And then operationally, they can scale those resources down to zero. So how has this change in thinking uh, really influenced um, billing and cost management for people? From a pure development standpoint, I mean, cloud has opened up all sorts of new opportunities to, to solve new and interesting problems. But you can also take your le legacy applications and, and move them to the cloud and really right size them. Uh, whereas before, you might have had to deploy an extra large database for your peak uh, workload. Now you can scale up dynamically as you need to, as you hit that peak load, and, and only pay for what you need in order to manage your environment. Um, and, what we're seeing over time is, is that as services are re-architected, that they start to take advantage of, of cloud-native services like Kubernetes uh, that allow you to automatically or dynamically scale your service uh, to exactly what you need to consume. So let's talk about some examples of that, of ways to optimize costs in the cloud. I've heard of things like um, right-sizing machines, preemptible machines, committed use discounts, sustained use discounts. So can you explain the differences and when you would use each of those? Sure. Yeah, there's really two big buckets of, of how you would do cost optimization for cloud. One is really about resource optimization, and the other one is pricing optimization. So in the case of resource optimization, you have a few different options that we support within Google Cloud or across uh, your environment. One is this. Uh, eff effectively identifying uh, underutilized resources. So that can be through uh, right sizing. So if you have a four core machine and you really only need one core at your peak capacity, you can downsize that to a one core machine, spend less money. Idle instances or idle uh, resources that are essentially abandoned, uh, we'll identify them so you can shut them down. Or even resource scheduling. If you have a, a cyclical pattern of usage, uh, we can help you automate the life cycle of that resource. So that's what we call resource optimization. And then the second big bucket is really pricing optimization. How can I do the same amount of work, but for less money? And that's when things like sustained use discounts, which automatically calculate uh, the lowest possible cost and give you a discount for continually running machines, or committed use discounts. If you plan to have a steady state over a long period of time, you can make a commitment, which nets you a large discount in terms of the day-to-day the -day running of that machine. Uh, and we have more models like that that allow you essentially to buy down the cost of that machine relative to the life cycle of it. That's great. So those are cost optimization. But how do you actually organize your business in the cloud to take advantage of those things? So it's a great point, actually. Uh, about 50% of all the inbound calls that we get for help like, is, how do we even get started? How do I organize my business on Google Cloud? You can't do cost optimization if you're not already organized. And so where we've seen customers struggle in the past is, is that they've organically grown on the cloud without really thinking about their business structure. And so 
We offer a variety of mechanisms to help you like segregate your business into business units. And so we have what we call the resource hierarchy, which is orgs, folders, projects, and then ultimately user labels, which are attached to resources. You can use any or a combination of these uh, in order to in order to organize your costs, once you have workloads organized into discrete units, at that point you can start to think about optimizing either as an individual workload or across all of your workloads in totality. Does it make a difference depending on the structure of your business, though? Absolutely, actually. We we see customers using uh, and organizing their business differently on Google Cloud depending on what's most important to them and their workloads. Uh, we have some customers whose it's really important that they have autonomous control of their business units. Uh, and so they might completely segregate uh, a set of resources from another set of resources from a cost standpoint um, in order to delegate control uh, financially for that workload. Uh, we see other customers who need all of their workloads to coexist within the same organizational bucket. Uh, and in those cases, they tend to use user labels as the strategy for organizing their costs. But in those particular cases, it's really important that you've thought about like what is the hierarchy of my labels on those resources? Because again, uh, your organization is in a single layer, and so therefore your cost organization strategy should also not be a single layer. Uh, so think about that first before you do anything else. Mm. So like an example could be not just dev and test environments, but maybe organized by project or teams for HR, finance, et cetera. Absolutely, or potentially organized by line of business, right? Uh, take Google, for example. We're not just Google Cloud. We're, we consist of YouTube and ads and many other businesses. And so as we started to organize our business running on top of Google Cloud, we would put it in operating divisions. Uh, and then we would potentially segregate between production and, and development environments mm. within that or within different teams, uh, depending on who's managing the cost. Now that you know where the costs are coming from in this case, how do you actually get visibility into controlling those costs? Because I can imagine with so many teams, at Google, too. You might have mushrooming costs that are inadvertent. You spin up a VM, and it just spirals in terms of costs. How, how do we control that? Yeah, it's a challenging problem. I would say the first thing that you want to do is you probably and it depends on your organization, but but delegating control to the owners of the workloads is a really good place to start. And within Google Cloud, within our cost management tooling, we have a bunch of different tools that allow you to delegate that control uh, through our reporting frameworks, and you can delegate at any level of your organization. But we have reporting uh, that gives you visibility through time series uh, visualizations that you can break down by environment, by product, by SKU, essentially however you've organized your workloads. We also have detailed billing exports that allow you to get access to the data and build your own dashboards so that you can view the data. And lastly, we have financial governance controls. And I think that's a really important and probably where you were going with this, uh, is, is how do I build that financial governance into my plan for cloud? Uh, so within that, we have tooling for budgets, which allow you to monitor costs over time per workload or across your organization. Or we have quota, which allows you to essentially set a limit for, for how many resources a, an individual workload can consume or what a division can consume. Uh, and essentially what that does is it sets the upper limit or the upper threshold for, for resource consumption. Well, I could see visibility still being a big challenge with hundreds of teams you have per second, per minute billing costs that pop up. So how do you identify root causes and trends Identifying the root cause of cost can be challenging. Uh, part of what we offer you in the cost management tooling is the ability to drill into costs. So starting at the org level, at the at, at the highest level, like where is my cost coming from and am I monitoring for spikes? Uh, our tooling actually allows you to drill all the way down to individual SKUs uh, by workload, by environment, depending on how you've organized your costs. Uh, and we provide hourly level data. Now it's not per second uh, because honestly, like trying to consume that amount of data and, and react at that level is not really something a human can do. And because of that, we, we offer these financial governance tools that actually allow you to monitor. So they monitor for conditions. And so when you set a budget for an environment, uh, it's not just looking at your actual costs, it's looking at the forecasted costs as well. And as your costs change over time, uh, you can get real-time notifications that say, hey, Stephanie, your, your workload is changing, like you should probably come take a look, see if something changed in your environment that you want to uh, maybe make a change mm. in response to. I imagine all these activities could be pretty challenging to keep track of at enterprise scale. So for example, if I had a team where we were running eight vCPU machine, and then we had a database team and analytics team running queries against eight terabytes of data, another team you know, with request ML APIs, how do you really optimize for costs in all those scenarios? Yeah, it can be really challenging, right? Like if you've got a, a really complex like uh, discounting mechanism like a humidity use discount, which operates on microsecond increments, 
the, the, just the, the sheer thought of trying to rationalize that data and think about like, what kind of a commitment do I want to make? I'm signing my organization up, uh, can be very complex. That's why we have what we call recommendations where we want to service to you the correct recommendation for committed use discounts. So it takes the guesswork out of it. Um, we have the tools that allow you to drill down to that level of visibility with accurate start stop times broken down into hourly chunks, but let's make it easy. Let's give you the tools that allow you to make those, those decisions for your organization without having to have a PhD in billing. That's really funny. That's the first time I've heard that, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things that, that cloud billing's often accused of being far too complex. And one of the things that we've really been driving in Google Cloud is how do we simplify uh, the experience overall so that users can understand the discounting mechanisms that we're using, and, and they don't need to have this deep understanding of, of how the mechanics work under the hood. What about access controls and policies and rolling that down throughout your org hierarchy? Like, for example, if I had a database team or analytics team, how do I prevent them from spinning up you know, hundreds of nodes for a spanner database? Uh, yeah, wow, that, that sounds scary. So quota is the first way that you do that, right? Like, So by setting a quota limit, you can set the resource limit for a given team, how much can they consume? You also use identity and access management in order to ensure least privilege within your organization. And that's something that you should be actively managing. Uh, and then from a pure cost standpoint, we, we allow uh, access to uh, workload owners to, to view the cost data so they can manage it themselves. But we also provide aggregate views of that at the organization level so that your, your billing administrators or your org admins can view the costs on an ongoing basis. It seems like you have to pull in the right people in many ways, the development teams and the actual billing management teams as well, and kind of control it from various perspectives. It's definitely a team effort. It, it helps if you start with a policy in mind of, of how you want to organize and govern your business. Uh, and then you can apply that and you can automate it, right? You can use Terraform in order to create policy in the form of budget, in the form of quota, uh, and identity and access management so that, that when your teams go to do development, that they have the right level of control. I want to talk a little bit about chargebacks because I know this can be pretty common with large organizations and lots of teams spinning up resources. So is, do you see it being common to do chargebacks or separate invoicing? So that's going to really depend on your business and what you're optimizing for. Uh, we've, we've got very large customers who have a single billing account and single invoice for their entire business. They essentially use the organizational constructs we talked about earlier of folders and projects for each of the different business units. And they use chargeback through the reporting and detailed billing exports that we provide in order to create the visibility and chargeback that they need for their business. We have other customers who are basically are managing via purchase order, and because of that, they need separate billing accounts, which means separate invoices, and that allows them the autonomy uh, within each of those business units to instead of using chargeback to get individual invoices. Now, even in those customers, there's still an element of chargeback, right? Like that that individual invoice might represent multiple uh, operating entities within the team, might be different applications, it might be different uh, teams actually within the structure of that. And the tooling, the reporting, the exports, they allow you to drill down to that fine grain level within your invoice. So we have support for either of those use cases. A absolutely. We want to give you the flexibility to build your business on top of Google Cloud the way that you need it to operate. OK, so how about contracting? Because I know this is very important for a company that works with a cloud vendor. How do we help provide them with complex pricing? So Google Cloud provides a variety of mechanisms for discounting. We have, I will, I'll split it into what we call custom contracting and what we call self-service discounting. So things like committed use discounts, BigQuery flat rates, these are things that customers can negotiate effectively on their own. If you come into our console experiences, you can actually think about your environment and purchase those without the assistance of an account team. Then we have what we call custom contracting. Within a custom contracting, we can negotiate discounts uh, for specific workloads, specific products. Uh, and you work through an account team in order to, to finalize that. And then those discounts will flow through all of your billing data into all of your views so that you can understand and rationalize like the impact of your contract relative to the cost of cloud. So we just covered a lot, but what can people do to get value out of cost optimizations today? Great question. Uh, I would recommend that you start by visiting the Google Cloud Cost Management page, which uh, has a repository of, of, of all of our content, including white papers, links to our uh, videos from Next Talks and Beyond the Bill uh, video series that explain basic concepts for you around cost management. Uh, you can check out the playlist below. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Well, everyone, if you have any questions about billing, cost optimizations, or any new hacks that you want to learn, comment in the section below and check out the links. Thanks again, and join us next time for Eyes on Enterprise.